Hello. Um, in this video, I will repurpose a linear translation stage for high magnification macro work. The parts that's going to be used in this video can all be purchased online. No custom machining, no custom drilling or whatsoever is required to assemble the, uh, the stage. So let's begin. First of all, we'll need the tools to mount in screws and stuff. So it might be a screwdriver or something. In my case, I'm going to be using a hex wrench set. Looking at the screws I have, I'll probably need this one. Definitely this one. And perhaps this one. The rest can be set aside. So the tools to mount the screws or whatever. It could be a screwdriver or hex wrenches. I prefer hex screws, so I use hex wrenches, obviously. The second thing we need would be the linear translation stage itself. What I have here is a Newport linear translation stage. It's the 433 series. However, the 423 series is also perfectly fine. It's a bit smaller, this size, like this big, which is totally fine as well. And I recommend Imperial stages. You will understand why later. Just make sure it's Imperial because it makes stuff a lot easier. Metric works as well, however, not as easily. Then we will need the Arca Swiss compatible clamp, which is this, what I have here. It's a clamp from iShoot. iShoot is one of those uh, typical vertically integrated Chinese brands. However, their stuff are actually quite high quality. They design their, th their own things instead of just you know, copying everything. It's a pretty good brand. By the way, all the stuff in all the stuff required for this build will be linked in the description. There's going to be eBay links or BNH photo, depends on what I find. Um a clamp of BNH photo made by Sunway Photo can also be used, but that one is a lot more expensive and it's frankly not as good as this one. The openings of that clamp is twenty five millimeters. However, in Imperial, we have these two screws, and one inch in Imperial is not equivalent to 25 millimeters in metric. One inch is 25.7 millimeters. Whilst it's possible to mount the clamp on, there's a little bit of play to it, and for the last screw, you will have to force it in. It still works, however, this one is cheaper. It's higher quality, in my opinion. And it's the better choice. Then what we also need would be the screws. Here I have three screws that are of the quarter inch size with a thread pitch of 20. These are quite short. It depends on the slot here obviously. This is totally enough. So these are the screws that I want to use. It's a bit hard to locate stuff by looking through the uh, screen of my phone and this one it's not compulsory but it's good to have this one goes in the middle usually the clamp comes with it sometimes if it doesn't you can just buy this off any kind of supplier re relatively easily the last thing we would need is the dovetail rail Arca Swiss compatible that goes on the bottom here I have a really right stuff rail which is not actually needed. There's cheaper ones out there. iShoot makes a set of rails that are pretty good quality as well. However, since I have this lying around and my other three iShoot rails are somewhere else, I'm using it on different setups, so I'm going to be using this one instead. Alrighty, so before we begin assembling this thing, I would like to kind of introduce why a linear translation stage is preferred to one of these rather typical so-called macro rails that uses some sort of lead screw in between. This is called a lead screw, this thingy. The advantage here is uh, backlash. This thing is virtually backlash free. Whereas this thing, due to the precision of the screw, there's backlash. For this one, it's not really expensive. However, at even two, two to one, which is relatively high mag, one to one is the standard. You can see the backlash. 
it's totally visible. And when you get into, say, 20 or 5 times, it's going to be magnified greatly. The second thing is precision. The resolution of this lead screw, I don't know what it is, but it's obviously quite low since they do not mention it. I'm not bashing this product, it's totally fine. I like it as it is, but for high magnification work, this does not cover it. Also, there's the rails from Really Right Stuff. I used to have a couple, sold them off. Doesn't cover it. Novoflex makes some rails. While those rails should, should technically be backlash free, the resolution on those rails are also not that great. Whereas for something like this, the resolution would depend on the micrometer. So here I have, I believe it's an SM25 micrometer. You can see here, it's a bit out of focus, but anyway. The micrometer here is rated for one, one UM, one micron gradation. So the resolution is one micron. It's entirely possible to swap this micrometer out for something even more ridiculous such as this one. This one is a micrometer with 0.5 resolution, which I'm not using at the moment because, frankly, I don't need it. I picked this up because it was very cheap. So there we go. The reason why we want an imperial stage, or why we actually prefer an imperial stage, is because the screws here are imperial. These are quarter inch screws. They're not M6, which is the equivalent, quote unquote. So what you will normally have is let me find a bunch of stuff here. The ring light is above me and it's probably gonna produce some glare, but screws like these, these are all imperial, so they're not metric and they're not going to fit in a metric stage because of the thread pitch differences. Whilst it's possible, obviously, or you can just buy some screws that are made this way, there's probably some out there. I don't know about a source. If you do know a source, please tell me. For this builder, we'll use a uh, an Imperial stage since the United States, they use Imperial and they are one of the biggest surplus markets out there, so Imperial stages are also easier to get, which is great for us. And in addition to all this, I'll just pull it back here, we, we can use a different clamp on the top as well, such as this one, which allows sort of panoramic stuff, but for this build I'm not going to use it, and I'm not going to use it at all because I don't think it really works that well, but that is an option if you want it. Uh, let's go on with the assembly. Assembling this thing is very easy and intuitive. Like a kid can do it, let's be honest here. It's just several screws. The orientation of the plate can be changed around to your desires. This obviously will depend on how the camera and the lens is going to be used. For example, um, what I have here is a, a Nikon Dyno 810 with a Laowa 25mm ultra macro lens. On the bottom I have an L bracket. And on the Laowa lens I have this flimsy little tripod foot. This thing is not that great. It doesn't really work that well. If I want to mount it like this on the tripod foot, obviously I would want the clamp to be like this, so I can mount it here. If I want to use the L bracket, I don't want it going left and right, obviously, uh, with respect to the camera. I would have to mount it this way. Since this is what I want, I'll be mounting it this way. I'll put this on the floor. Okay. Let's go on with assembly. So, the first step is pretty simple. Put in these uh, screws. It's going to be a bit hard. Let me... There we go. We want these screws to be put in and secured. So if you have the center one installed, don't have it very tight. Have it kind of loosely staying inside, maybe like this. Kind of loose, because it doesn't really matter. And the advantage of this is 
if you bring one of these hex wrenches and when you buy one of these stages they come with a set of uh, cheap clumsy wrenches anyway this is a pretty high quality one obviously by just looking at it having it like this you can change the direction without dismounting the clamp so if you don't have this and you take off these screws the clamp would obviously fall out it's a lot more well flimsier you can lose stuff but having this screw in the middle is kind of advantageous I'll proceed to mounting these screws. There we go. Let's see. This is perfect. Just secure them. There we done. The clamp is mounted. On the bottom, I would like to mount this. So just align them up. mount these in. What I want to do is I want to push against it so that it's perfectly aligned parallel to this section. If I, if the index stopper could have been installed I can align it here as well. I'm a little bit ill sorry but yeah let's tighten the screws. Uh, there we go. Mm -hmm. Completed. Tighten them a bit further. And there you have it. The thing is now assembled. Looks pretty nice, doesn't it? So this is completed. The clamp is 35 US dollars. The rail is, I believe it's 55 US dollars, I think. I think it's 55. And the linear translation stage I have here, I purchased it a well. Um, I got a, I got a pretty good deal on it. It's uh, one hundred and twenty dollars includes the micrometer as well. When you buy one of these, a uh, trick would always be to make sure that the uh, micrometer is on the rail. It doesn't come without a micrometer, and you need to make sure that the micrometer actually works. If it's stuck. Don't buy it. If it's stuck, it means maybe there's internal corrosion and stuff. It's virtually impossible to repair. I've seen ones that have been stuck. There we have it. 1UM translation. This is uh, suitable for macro work. Well, photomicrography to be exact, up to 20x. The uh, 20x um, Mitsutoyo M plan lens, the normal one, not the uh, crummy SL version. The normal one, it has a depth of field of 1.6 micrometers. This is not suitable for 50 times where because the 50x uh, Mitsutoyo M-Plan lens, APO lens, it's apochromatic, it has a, a depth of field of 0 0.9 micrometers. Yeah, I believe it's 0 0.9 micrometers. So how much did we spend on this? Well, how much did I spend on it? 55, 120, so that makes 175 plus, uh, this one is 35, so let's see, uh, $210. Now this can be mounted on a tripod, it can be mounted on, say, a photomicrography setup, and I'll show it. Oh, uh, before, before we continue, if the micrometer isn't perfect, if it's like a bit gritty, if it's dry, you can always fix it with some pretty good lube. I, I recommend the uh, Cretox or Crytox lubricants. Uh, this is kind of impossible to get in Australia, so I had to import mine from the States. This is perfect with WD-40, where you clean off all the grease and stuff that has built up in the micrometer. Since usually these, uh, these stages are working in harsh industrial environments, stuff builds up inside. And these are almost always salvaged from industrial equipment anyway, the used ones. The new ones are usually surplus. By the way, a thing like this, just a stage alone from Newport, purchased new would be 400 something dollars. The micrometer is 150, 135. I don't know, but don't buy it new. Buy a used one. You can get something like this for 120 bucks. It's totally worth it. Now this can be used on, say, a tripod and my camera. Let me bring it up. So I have a tripod here. I'll make this thing a bit taller. 
The uh, camera's, uh, the phone is mounted on a monopod, by the way. And now it's going to show the true nature of my desk, which is extremely messy. So, because we have uh, the rail on the bottom, we can mount it on the tripod easily. This is a really right stuff tripod, so it's obviously compatible. And the eye shoot rail that I'm going to recommend, the uh, Dovetail Arca Swiss compatible rail, is also compatible as well, since this is one of these uh, screw mechanisms, not the latch ones. It's mounted. Perfect. Now what we can have is the camera mounted on top. Or if we want another degree of freedom, now that I think about it, we can have this mounted here instead of on the bottom. It's a bit out of the frame, which means I probably should make this taller yet again. You have left and right. You have back and forth, which is one micrometer. And the camera can now be mounted on through this method. So this is one of these uh, little latch things. And I hope it tights up. Nope, it doesn't. There's a way to tighten this, by the way, but you get the point. Well, I have to tighten it, but left and right, back and forth. This rail is, I believe, it's around $100. However, my opinion is you don't really need this. It's kind of unnecessary to have this. Left and right, okay. Just reframe, just move the tripod a bit, and you're totally done. So I'll get rid of the rail right now. As I've said, this is totally unnecessary. Put this aside. This goes straight on the L, L bracket. So for the lens I'm using, I actually have a full written, pretty long in-depth review, a long-term user of the lens, a review of it on my personal blog. So uh, I'll link it in my in the description as well. If you want to have a look, you can check it out. I do recommend this lens. It's great quality for the price. It's also really, really good because it's kind of close to what Mitsutoyo does. The Mitsutoyo is a little bit better, but it's not two times the price better. There we have it. This is completely assembled. What we have here is a system that offers higher resolution, cheaper price. And it works really well, doesn't it? You can do focus stacking in the field, or we can mount this to, as I've said, a photomicrography setup and do it manually. So the disadvantage of something like this would be the raised center of gravity. If I pull this up a bit, you can see the center of gravity is actually pretty tall here. So we have the bore head, we have the stage. Obviously, if we get rid of the bore head, we just use this little leveling plate down below. There's a lot less freedom of movement that we have here, but it's going to lower the center of gravity, which is always great. However, for something like this, the center of gravity is also a problem. Let's be fair here. This one doesn't offer much advantages over this. And a bore head is, um, it's pretty good. I usually like using a bore head. A better up upgrade would be a geared head, which I also have, and I'm trying to get used to it. It's, it offers uh, way more precision. But a bore head is always just the easiest thing to use, in my opinion. There we have it. For part two of the video, I'll show the stage being mounted on my portable vertical photomicrography setup. The reason why I can't do it in this video is because the base plate of this optical rail is um, is missing in this setup. The, uh, the, the plate is used in my larger studio setup, which is back there. So what I did was I just mounted the rail on using one of these right angle brackets with uh, another type of carrier. Not this one. This one doesn't really work with this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to directly mount this onto the uh, carrier without the little rail on the bottom where I have to use this one. I just realized it wouldn't work because this is, this is metric, which means the thread distance 25 millimeters instead of 25.7, which is one inch. 
so I can't physically mount this onto here without either using one of these which makes the center of gravity a little bit taller don't want that it's also a little bit riskier what if I use the wrong dial the entire setup would just fall down and another reason is um, if I want to mount this onto here the imperial stage onto a metric carrier I'm going to be damaging the threads it's possible I can force the screws in I can force the uh, metric screws in here but it's going to damage the threads which is not a good idea all right thanks for watching if you want to check out my work I have a Flickr gallery linked in the description I'll also have all the parts used for this build the clamp the um, well I'll have this linked a new one but don't buy it new trust me buy a used one it's virtually the same besides cosmetically this one has a lot of scratches obviously I'll also link the uh, really right stuff rail and I'll also link the um, what do you call it the uh, eye shoot one that I actually recommend over this one because this one is a lot more expensive the eye shoot one is cheaper check out this the uh, description for any uh, information that's probably not covered in the video and thanks for watching